Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for September 6, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Council, administrators, and our fine audience this evening. Uh, Ms. Burner, can you call the please? Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Vaughn. <coughs> Councilman Cook? Here. Councilwoman Eggleston? Here. Councilman Lindsay? Here. Councilman Roadwald? Here. Seven members present. Thank you. Tonight's invitation will be done by Fire Chief Preston. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings, many favors. Please, Lord, be in this meeting. Let thy will be done. Guide us in your way. Bless our first responders, the troops, at home and overseas. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, moving on, let me do action on the minutes for the uh, August 15th, 2022. So, second. Any discussion or questions, council, or comments on those? When you're ready, Ms. Burner. All right. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. And Councilman Eggleston? Yes. And it's accepted 7 0. Thank you very much. Moving on to the city manager report. Good evening, Mr. Bridge. Good evening. How are you doing, sir? Good. Mr. Mayor? Good. Um, did we skip over communication? Sorry. Did we? we did. I apologize. Oh, you're good. Yeah, what am I missing here? I don't see any on this. It's probably. And did anyone in the audience need to say is what I'm getting at? Like parking record board, do you have anything? Oh, well, that's under committee report. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm like, what did I miss? And my comment earlier my bad. still stands. Well, I didn't hear you say anything about communications. Usually it's like communications done this evening, blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> I'm, I, my, my apologies. All right, so city manager's report. Um, so uh, I'd like to share with the city manager report. Um, so under the first item is discussion topics. We have a joint meeting with Bethel Township, Clark County that we need to get scheduled. This will be very similar to the one that we did with Bethel, Miami. Um, talking about the annexation and services, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I have to get a few dates of availability for council because then I have to take those dates and get with Bethel Township trustees to find out their availability as well. So I have some notes here because we have a lot of meetings coming up between city council and planning board. So we are shooting for this to be sometime in October. Um, so I don't have any availability for the 10th, the 11th, the 3rd, the 17th, or the 7th. Um, so any of those day, uh, any dates outside of that would work. It comes down to council availability. Um, if you want to do something the week of 10-3, um, that's not my preferred week. I would prefer the week of the 17th or the week of the 24th, to just allow our schedule on the administrator side to kind of clear out a little bit. Um, if you start with the week of the 17th, you have the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and the week of the 24th, there's actually a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday available. What's wrong with Friday? It's they do. Friday. Well, you can do Fridays, but generally they don't like to have meetings on Friday evening. Uh, any of those weeks is fine with me. My will be out of town the 18th through the 20th, and the Fridays are work till 7th. So it looks like the week of the 23rd? The week of the 24th? Yeah. 24th, okay. Okay. So I probably want at least three dates. That way I can have some wiggle room with their elected how officials. How about the 24th, 25th, and 26th, those are three dates. Oh, they won't have anything to do on the 27th week. that Thursday? If I can have them work within that whole week, is that fine? Yeah, the 27th, yeah. Including the 27th? Yeah. I'm good with that. Okay. You said the 4, 5, 6, and 7? Yeah. 24th, 25th, 26th, and 27th, October. Okay. And then you'll get back to this? Yes. Awesome, and the, we'll probably host that here. Okay. Um, what do we think about start time? 6.30. Yeah. Awesome. All right, uh, moving on with the city manager report with Miami County Annexation DDC, uh, DDC Management. We have the preliminary plan action September 28th, uh, 2022. That's here at Smith Park Shelter House. Um, the pre-annexation agreement is still in legal review. 
Um, liability insurance, we have uh, submitted that renewal, so we will find out here hopefully in the next couple weeks what our insurance premiums will be for 2023 and a few months remaining of 2022. And at the last meeting, I had attached policy review. This was uh, requested by some council members. I had asked for any suggestions or amendments for the panhandling and the peddlers uh, codified ordinances. If there are no amendments, they will be introduced and voted on as is. Is it possible just to do it the way you with the panhandling altogether and not allow it in the city? Uh, this is the most restrictive it can get. So this is what Jake, yeah. mm -hmm. Jake did say. These are the most restrictive you guys can get. Mm -hmm. Since we can't do away with it, I guess what I read about the Okay. <coughs> Any other feedback? <coughs> this is as restrictive as you get. Fine to me. Okay. You don't want to make it less harmful. Just keep it as is. So. Okay. Make the fines more if we can. <clears throat> and citywide traffic results. I did email the uh, uh, website uh, folks today. Hopefully that will be posted to www.newcarlisleohio.gov so the citizens can see that. Be happy to entertain any questions. Any uh, questions for Mr. Burge? Thank you. Will we be getting uh, the environmental report? I'll have to talk with Jake about that. Yes, it's something we're working on. Mm -hmm. Um, piggyback to his, and when that comes available, does that? Because I know it's it's a privileged document on there in the house. We get our hands on it. Is it then opened up? Um, I would, if I had to guess right now, I would say it becomes a public document. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to say completely yes to that. That's what Jake could work out with their attorney. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? On, on the document, <clears throat> if it comes to our attorney, to us, or to you, to us, can he not mark that uh, confidential by attorney client privilege? I'm sure he could, but I think I think the question was, could the public see it? What he's getting at is, is if it's sent in the public email, or sent in our email, not marked confidential, then it is public. But, but I know you, like, I'm assuming you just like you said, if I understood you right, you're going to let Jake make the decision sure. and clarification on that. Yes. Because mm -hmm. I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but I think everybody would like it to be public from my opinion. Yeah, for sure. But that would have to be okayed by the original attorney, correct? No, it has, to do, it has to do with interpretation of state law. That would probably what we'd come down to for Jake to make okay. the determination. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Anything else? All right, and uh, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. This one, well, I had a question for you, but I'm sure there'll be other days. Come back. Yeah. All righty. Uh, moving on to committee uh, committee reports. Um, <coughs> I don't believe we have any other committee reports tonight. So uh, there are two comments from members of the public. Any questions, comments, feedback? Please go to the podium. Name, address, five minutes of time. <coughs> All right, moving on. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Drop down two resolutions, Ms. Barnett. Okay. <coughs> um, we've got resolution 2022, which I believe we need to break rules of council to add um, the 2023 estimated resources to this resolution. So can I have a motion to break rules of council? So moved. Okay. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. And Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That passes seven zero. <coughs> so is that we go there to yep. move on? All right. So we have resolution 2022-14R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution accepting the official certificate of estimated resources for 2023 along with the tax year 2023 rates and amount certification from the Clark County Budget Commission. Mr. Mayor, Sir. move to accept resolution 2022-14R. And an explanation to this resolution, this is yearly legislation 
That establishes the, our financial numbers that we use to create the city's operating budgets. Any discussion, Council? Yeah. Sir. The last page. You said this comes up annually? Yes, it does. This is not money coming from the state? This is what the county gives us to certify that we can build our budget off of. So when we do our tax budget every year that you guys approved a few months ago, they take that information and they put it into your estimated resources. So that's the numbers that we plug into our 2023 operating budget. So if they say that we're getting four million in a particular line item, we can't put 4.5 million. So it's engaging for us to do our budget on. And the other stuff is just certifying our tax levels. So then what is the last page? That's our local government fund. That's how much you get from the state of Ohio. That's filtered down through the county. This, I looked into this a few years back. Talked to a number of people in the county asking to see how they perform it and how it came to be. Talked to the auditor, he did Talked to the treasurer, he did I talked to Melissa Tuttle, who just become the court. She said, we probably haven't things as such a mess. I never know what it seems that when this was, this formula was devised, all the people involved in it did. Well, I, I think we need to get together with all these other agencies. So I have some information on that. So about three years ago, council actually approved the formula they used. It was a resolution. There's one of two formulas that they can use, so I don't know why someone told they don't know where it's at. They may not know what, re what formula they use between the two. But my understanding of it is, is that um, Springfield and the county would be the only two votes available to change it. Because it's your largest, senate, largest municipal entity in the county and the county itself. So unless Springfield and the county wants to change the formula, that's, and that's what would the issue was a few years ago back. They were the, the, the complaining that uh, the formula was in favor of Springfield and the county and other jurisdictions in the cities would get the less. It's always based off your population. That's what it's based off of, you know, but that's what I recall from that. Mm -hmm. Springfield is 10 times larger than and we get 32,000, they get 200. That's more than the time. That's not a reporting population. But I don't think the formula looks like, works like that. You said it's based on population. Well, it is going to be based on population and other factors. It could be based off population. It could be based off, in addition to how much LMI people you have in your community, there's a lot of variables that go into that equation. Population is just one of those variables. You're going to have four or five variables that go into it. I would agree with what you're getting at, though, because mm -hmm. I understand what you're trying to say. But at the same time, too, what? I do recall that them saying the other other formula would not generate that much more or that much less money. It all equals out to be the same. You're not going to have two vastly different formulas that, that produce vastly different numbers. So I think that'd be comparable. What I learned, there are two ways to mm -hmm. get the other money. Number one, according to the state's formula. Do according to a formula that make yourself. I don't know about the make yourself aspect of it. My understanding of it is both it's formulas are actually in state code. Yeah. To allow a government agency just to come up with a formula on their own, that's no that's no oversight with it. I don't I don't know about that. I really don't. I've never heard of it someone just making it up. That's what I was told by several Sure. What, what happens if we turn this down? Uh, then you can't develop a budget. This has to be certified back to the auditor's office by like October 5th or 6th or 7th or something like that. The checks and balances thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. As a county <coughs> government, they do this with every, every, every agency out there. They establish what you have based off your levies and then based off your tax budget. That's the numbers we have in here. These numbers are minus the local government fund. These are numbers that we supplied them in no way. And the local government fund is tied into this. Yes, it's the last page of that, sir. Yep. 
And actually, if it's at 32, we've actually went up the past few years. We were getting around 24, 25. Great questions. Mr. Lindsay, did you have something? No. Thank you. All right. Um, <coughs> we're at vote, I believe we're at. Yeah. Yep. Ready? Yep. All right. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? A very reluctant yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? I will echo Mr. Grimm's statement. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. All right, that passed the 7 0. That was a very grim. Yes. Oh, that was like, <laughs> like Halloween. Well, see, seems like I've never heard that before, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to our ordinances, we have Ordinance 2022 35. This was introduced on August 15th, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending section 280.03 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding the clerk of mayor's court. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance, uh, it further defines the, the uh, powers and duties of the clerk of the mayor's court, such as uh, administering oaths, taking uh, administering oaths and, and issuing uh, subpoenas. To name a few, sorry. Council, any discussion questions? Any other, Ms. Turner? Okay. Councilman Rodolph? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. And yes. Councilman Lindsay? That passes 7 0. <coughs> Moving on to Ordinance 2022-36. This was introduced on August 15th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending Section 1460.09 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding its Exterior Property Maintenance Code Enforcement. So moved. And this ordinance will allow the City's Code Enforcement Officer to file misdemeanor complaints into Mayor's Court. Yeah. Any questions? Is he going to do it? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. One question, Mr. Miracle. Sir, will this also uh, pertain to Main Street? That's anything in the city that would be a violation against our exterior property maintenance code. Is that in the record what he just said? It will be. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mm hmm. Are we good? Yep, we're good. All right. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 7 0. <clears throat> okay. 37. All right. We have Ordinance 2022 37. This was introduced on August 15th. Public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending section 1460.99 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding its exterior property maintenance code penalties. So moved. Second. Second. First. Second. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this ordinance establishes pen penalties for those who violate our exterior property maintenance code. Discussion council. Are you ready, Ms. Burns? Okay. Okay. Councilman Rodwell. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That passes 7 0. All right. The next three it looks like a read only so we have ordinance 2022-38 introduction tonight public hearing in action on september 19th 2022 <coughs> an ordinance employing a director of law and authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for legal services ordinance 2022-39 introduction tonight public hearing in action on september 19th 2022 
an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the purchase and installation of a natural gas backup generator at the City of New Carlisle Municipal Building. Ordinance 2022-40, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on September 19th, 2022. An ordinance amending ordinance 2021-36 that established a schedule of fines and costs and a bail bond schedule for the city's mayor court. And we have ordinance 2022-41E, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the purpose of repairing well number four by replacing its fitless adapter and declaring an emergency. So moved. Second. And for an explanation of this ordinance, I'll defer to our service director, Mr. Howard Kitko. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Uh, just a quick uh, description of this is basically this is what uh, top of the well that converts the vertical portion of the well to horizontal to pipe it through. And we noticed a, a crack in the, um, after the last cleaning. So it's right around $28,000, $29,000 to repair. So we just bumped it up in case we run into something else uh, during the repair. In discussion council okay. what was it about to uh, for the max what, what's that what's the maximum amount mr kicko uh, 35,000 35 okay i don't have the ordinance i'm not reading the, oh gotcha the other part. i haven't read the ordinance but i forgot thank you sir no problem mr bond how long do you use uh i believe this one's uh usually they don't go I mean, I think this one's been in since 1967, I think. So it's it's rare you replace them, so. Okay. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That passes 7-0. Would you like me to read the other business? Please. Additional city business. City Council special meeting will be Monday, September 26, 2022 at 6 p.m. at Smith Park Shelter House to discuss charter amendments, council retreat, and cemetery operations. City Council will hold their special meeting Wednesday, September 28, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House um, to act on the DDC residential development plan and zoning change and any other open discussion for city related matters. Any other topics council would like to discuss? I just go ahead, Mr. Cook. I would like to see city administration purchase a couple of bud lights or a couple of cans of bud spray for this cotton oh. picking place. I thought you said bud light. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we can more than happy do that, but the issue is when people rent it out, they prop the door open and there's food in here. So we can take corrective actions. I just don't think it's gonna be an end all solution, but I think it will definitely help. We have bombed this place twice so far this summer. Do you think we could buy a screen door? <laughs> that will last? <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll try some more corrective actions before we put a screen door on. The there. fire chief just said we can't have a screen door. One of those magnetic ones. I just got planning card with one that one arch. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, if, if there's something that we could do, like if one of the city workers could come in and do something, maybe that day of the meeting, if it's bad, I and mean, if they come, because there was a ton in here. I mean, that's that looks bad not only for them, us, it just it looks bad. So I don't know what we could do, but it would be nice. We could actually stop renting the shelter house and have people bring food in. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's an option. That's, that's an idea. Can we get to a cold one? Once the weather turns. I got you. Yeah. For sure. Okay. I don't remember being this bad like last year or anything. What yeah. if when the boys come in here during the morning to set up, could they not spray or bomb it? I will look and see what the time limit is that you have to be, you have to let it off and then you can come back into your property. I don't know if it's four hours, six hours. I know there is a time from when you bomb. Mm -hmm. And then of course we're like anything like that, like pesticides as a government agency, uh, you gotta be licensed to dispense some of that stuff. So 
when you got the public entering your facility, not just you in your home, it's a, it's a different thing. So we'll look into it, see what the time is for clearing it out after we set it off, and hopefully it's not within that time frame. That's not a good one. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> Sir. Could that be done like at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning and it would be cleared out? Well, it would. They, yeah, they're normally in here setting this up about 7.30, but I just, I haven't read a can in forever, so I'll, the can of a bomb. You haven't read that? I don't know what it is. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Anyone else? I just had a couple I wanted to go over. Um, I'm going to go in a backwards order, actually. Uh, since we went over a couple of things for um, uh, over, you know, over $20,000 purchases. And I know this has been brought up before recently. Um, how much headache did that get rid of you, get rid of to bump that back up for you guys? Oh, like the spending limit? Um, it's redundant, to be honest with you. It was 50. Because I notice it's popping up a lot here, right? it, so, which I'm assuming means that it's making more work for you guys on your end and making meetings longer as well. It, it, here's, here's how this goes down. It's, it's legislation development legislation approval that's attorney money and here's why it's redundant is because one all this has already been approved in the budget and it's already been approved in the CIP so it's just like we're doing another governmental step that has already been budgeted out and if there's a chance that we would have to expend that much money and it wasn't on the budget we would probably have to you know estimate like do an estimated resources adjustment um, if we had it in the fund balance we wouldn't have to um, but those are kind of few and far between that we don't budget enough out. But as you can see, these past couple of years, the amount of legislation has started creeping up. Yeah, I mean, the only reason I'm asking is, and I understand why it was done originally, but, you know, as far as, you know, we've never had a problem with any one administration, you know, spending money where they shouldn't be or, or you know, doing anything unethical. Um, you know, you, you guys and your team have always been very transparent, so I would have no problem here in the future if council would entertain the idea of bumping it up, you know, if they're not comfortable with going back to what it was, 50, maybe 40. I mean, even 40 would help yeah. a little bit, I think. Yeah, and I'll be very clear, we're very, we're very gracious to have the 20, because some city managers literally have like a 1,000 or 5,000, depending on what fund they're spending out of. Historically, we underspend your appropriations every single year. Um, so us, us overspending is not, not an issue. Um, that'd be something that we can definitely draft and get in front of you guys. I would like to know council's opinion on that dollar amount so we can go ahead and throw that in the legislation when we develop it. Um, I think the max amount I think is 50 um, and it can be 25, it can be 30, it can be 35, it can be 40, it can be up to that 50. Mm -hmm. It's really whatever council as a legislative body is comfortable with doing. Yeah. And it can always be readjusted in the future. Yeah. And it doesn't, it's not set in stone. Yeah. I, I don't know what they think. I just, you know, like I said, I've seen it pop up a lot here lately, and, and it just, you know, I think it would save a little bit of time, energy, and, and mm -hmm. money as well. So mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody got anything to say on that. Mr. When uh, when was it bumped up to twenty thousand? Yeah, bumped down. It was fifty. It was twenty. Um, about when? Mr. Lindsay, when did when was Ethan mayor? Because uh, Ethan, it was Ethan. Like Seventeen or eighteen. Six years ago or something like that? Like 2016, 2018, 16, 16 or 17, around there. But I'm not knocking it again. I yeah, just, for sure. You know, it's, <laughs> and inflation has bumped up quite a bit since then. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that that's why down by the ball fields you see those mounds of dirt. That's where the pit list goes. So we've been sitting like that for almost a month by the time to get quotes. And then we got to go through the legislative drafting. All that does take a while. Mainly, I think a lot of the pricing comes from my departments to do a lot of these mm -hmm. repairs. Oh, and then for sure. once you're over fifty thousand, uh, a lot of times you're into bidding now. So once you're into bidding, you're almost going to be coming to uh, council with legislation on those mm -hmm. for bid acceptance and contracts anyway. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm open. I wouldn't be a Mr. Mayor. Sir. I would be opposed to bumping it to 35. I think that would be, most things aren't that over that much. Most of it's usually under. I think 35 would be a good number to go with. And if we have to readjust it, you know, sooner or later we're gonna get all these things fixed <laughs> that has been here since the 60s. 
And then, you know, they, 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 the money won't have to be so high. I, think. I would think at 35, because that's what gas for tonight. That's the maximum amount on what yeah. Mr. Kitko was working on with that valve, yes. So I think 35 would be good. And like I said, most of the time it's 35 or less, but it's above the 20. So. It would take legislation to do that? Uh, yeah, it, it, it would take. Uh, you'd have to draft it up. Yeah. Do you need a motion to? Mm -hmm. I'll just one, one question I do have was is 35 sufficient for you guys I mean would, I, you, I would you be happy with that we just well we just discussed most of the ones like our sludge hauling um, this this job here have been in that ballpark okay. so for now I think it would be sufficient okay mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure here in a couple years maybe things like you said if they well, keep going where that yeah. the new norm yep. All right yeah, so I, I think 30, if council's agreement with 35, then I think uh, we don't need to make a motion for you to have it back to do it. Does any council member object to it? Besides me. Oh. You don't want that much. You want 15? You got something to keep? I think she wants 15. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one that heard that. <laughs> Well. Just like I'm trying to keep it under control. <laughs> can't control it, man. Can't control Mike. Yeah, you can. <laughs> uh, uh, moving on. Exactly. 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 You don't. <laughs> you don't need a uh, motion for that. Right? <laughs> moving on. Uh, <coughs> get back to uh, one of my other questions. I apologize. Um, on the uh, since we're going into you know the mayor's court and whatnot. Um, would there be, and I, I think we'd, we've gotten a few reports in the past, would there be a way to get some hot topics that are being worked on for code enforcement? Just for example, you know, just total out there example. If somebody's getting a, uh, if you guys are dealing with somebody that's got you know, five cars in their backyard, they're leaking oil and the neighbors are complaining, well, let's say that we see that and we don't know where the status of that is. I'm not saying all the all code enforcement things, that are the little things, but any of the higher topic areas, would it be a way to, for us to get a report on that? Um, you know, just some of the key ones? From, you know. Sure, sure. So um, I can accomplish that by one of two ways. Um, when I hire a full-time planning director, you're going to get your monthly reports back for that. So it might be listed in there. Um, and then two, I get a monthly court report every month of the cases that went through mayor's court. Um, so you guys get the financial side of things on that financial report. So maybe I'll just start emailing you guys, council, the actual report we get with the cases that come through, um, and you guys can have that information that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Glad that's a start. Mm -hmm. And then one other thing uh, for Mr. Kitko, since you are here tonight, um, I know I, I mentioned about the asphalt at the fire station for that parking lot. Did you ever end up getting a quote on that by chance? What fire station? Exactly. Yeah, no, we're, because of asphalt prices, we weren't doing anything with that until 23. No, Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Anyone else? All right. So, yeah. um, so we're going to go into executive session to discuss the employment of a, uh, a public employee. And when we return from that, I do not foresee any action or really any other discussion taking place afterwards. We need a motion to go in there. Move to go into uh, executive session. To discuss employment of a public employee. Second. Yeah. All right. Lindsay, Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. 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 Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That passes seven zero. All right, take just a quick five minute breather. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Mr. Mayor, move to adjourn. Camera going. Camera. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Move to adjourn, sir. Second. Second by Mr. Rodwald. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? 
Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rogoff? Yes. I'm still a